that a little differently. Um, well, according to our projections, if this will actually take place, 70% of LGUs will be dynastic by 2040. So we're sort of running out of time. And, and uh, I think the, the reality for us, uh, I mean, if this is true, hopefully it's not, but this seems to be the pattern. Um, so, so I think the reality for us is that in rooms like this, we discuss first best solutions. And brilliant people like Dr. Rakisa and Dr. Hutchcroft uh, and others will sort of map out what should be the logical sort of progression of these different reforms. But in reality, is these are all bargains. And so you have to ask yourself, will an anti-dynasty law ever become a reality in this country unless it's part of a bargain, right? Because taken as it is, it's actually sort of political suicide for half of Congress, right? So it's not gonna take place on its own. So if you talk to the governors, if you talk to the mayors, if you talk to the congressmen, which we have been doing, um, you have to figure out creative ways, which is how developing countries have actually managed deep institutional reforms. Creative ways to align their interests, as many of them as there are, with our public good interests for the longer term development of the country. So, so I think there I don't claim that we have figured this out because we have failed repeatedly for the last three decades to pass this particular law, but I sort of agree with Paul's, Paul's stealth approach that if they don't know any better, you introduce some sort of reforms that actually erode their situation over time, we might actually be benefiting from some of these developments. So I think maybe that's another way to, to look at these things, but I guess that's the trade-off is, do you wait over time 10, 20 years, or do you actually gamble? And, and this I think is, I'm not saying it's a good idea to gamble, but. I'm just trying to interpret the political winds right now.